Have you ever wondered how fish manage to clean their teeth underwater despite having no hands? In this episode, we answer this and other curious questions about animal interactions underwater. My name is Bertie, and this is Borneo from Below. Diving and photography is not just about the crazy critters, and when you spend as much time as I do underwater, you start to notice there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. Symbiosis is the collective term for interactions between animals. Here on the healthy reefs around Mabul, there are a number of fascinating examples of symbiotic relationships. First up, let's take a look at mutualism an interaction where two unrelated animals benefit from one another. This beautiful clownfish and anemone are a prime example of a mutualistic relationship. In short, the anemone provides the clownfish with a nice, safe place to live and hide from predators. In exchange, the clownfish makes sure his home is kept nice and clean and even helps defend it from uninvited guests. Cool, eh? have another similar interaction. Now I'm not sure if you guys can see this clearly, but here in the stand in front of me is a tiny burrow with a goby just poking his head out. If you look even closer, you might be able to spot a small shrimp in the same hole. This unique relationship is another mutualism. Here the shrimp and goby have teamed up to maximise their chances of survival. The shrimp's actually blind, but it's great at digging and maintaining burrows, whilst the goby keeps watch and warns of predators. As housemates, they both chip in and help each other out. So, in answer to my earlier question, how on earth do fish clean their teeth without hands? Well, here you go. This moray eel has a mouth full of sharp teeth that regularly need a good brushing. Thankfully, the little cleaner shrimp you can see buzzing around his head are brave enough to do it for him. The shrimp remove and eat parasites and leftover food from the moray's mouth, which helps the eel to remain healthy and at the same time keeps the shrimp well fed. Despite the benefit to the moray eel, he doesn't seem to exactly enjoy the procedure. Turns out even fish don't like a trip to the dentist. Now, not all interactions are that friendly. Parasitism is another type of symbiosis where one animal, the parasite, benefits and the other, well, uh, suffers. One example is lizardfish and sand gobies infected with small crustaceans and worms. Presumably, the parasite benefits by stealing the fish's resources either internally or externally. Oddly enough, they mainly attach to the fish's head. It's hard to imagine what it must be like living with a small creature permanently stuck on your head, but I'm sure it can't be too much fun. Finally, there's one more type of underwater symbiotic relationship, known as commensalism. This is often disputed, but refers to relationships where one animal benefits and the other isn't bothered. The best example of commensalism is a remora or suckerfish. These guys are too lazy to swim and search for food themselves, so they've completely adapted to hitch a ride and eat dry through food. On top of the remora's head is a flat, oval-shaped organ like a suction cup that can attach to the underside of sharks and turtles, which means they basically get a piggyback everywhere. From this position, the remora doesn't have to waste any energy swimming or looking for food since it can pick off any table scraps from the host dinner. So there you have it. Next time you go diving, be sure not just to look out for cool animals, but also the fascinating interactions between them.
All right, two, two minutes, guys. I'm just going to grab my gear. Hang on. Oh, I've been stuck in there for hours. Oh. Thanks for that.